Hello everyone, welcome back. This lesson is going to be kind of fun, actually. Uh, we're going to do one uh, more kind of running total, but this time we're going to use it to calculate E, uh, if you remember that number from math, and pi, if you remember that number. And as it turns out, E can be calculated by 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial, plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, plus dot dot dot. And if you carry that out in an infinite way, you'll have an exact calculation of E. So what we're going to do is write a program that, that will calculate it to, you know, 10,000 or 100,000 or something, something like that to get a good approximation of E. And pi is the same way, actually. So pi uh, can be calculated by 4 times 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh plus 1 ninth minus 1 eleventh. So this series, uh, carried out all the way, uh, gives, you, uh, gives you pi, actually. So we'll write another program to calculate pi uh, up to, you know, whatever. Uh, we can run the series out, 10,000, 100,000, a million, and, uh, and come up with a good estimate of pi. So, uh, so I thought this would be kind of fun. These are running totals. Um, these are loops. Um, so we actually will learn to loop by 2. You can see this 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So how to loop by two. We'll also learn this concept of a method signature. What you'll see on the test is something like, hey, write a method that looks like this. And the method signature is basically the header. So what the method should return, what it takes, and what it should return. And then the notion of a multi-line comment. So how you might have like a whole paragraph of comments and what those typically look like in Java. Okay, so this will be, uh, be kind of fun. So let's go to the computer and write our two programs. Let's start with E, and you'll notice uh, that E, we can break it down into actually two different methods. One method is to calculate the factorial. So you see uh, it would be really helpful if we could just send in a number 3 and come back with the factorial, or 4, or whatever. And uh, we already wrote that method in a prior video, so I just copied it into this uh, particular uh, class. So that'll be function uh, number 1, or method uh, 1. Uh, and then we'll have the main method that actually builds this running uh, total through a for loop up until uh, however, number, however many numbers we want to end our series. Okay, um, you're going to see things like this on the test, which is basically describing the method that uh, they want you to write. And it consists of two parts. One is a multi-line comment. And the way Java works is if it sees a slash asterisk, then assumes everything after that until it sees an asterisk slash is a comment, including multiple lines. So that's a multi-line comment, no big deal, other than um, there's some conventions uh, that are used that you'll see on the test uh, as well. Uh, a convention about describing each of your parameters. So this method takes one parameter called x and it describes what it is, the number to end the series, so like i in this um, equation. I, and then uh, what it returns, so it'll return an approximation of E. And then a precondition, which is uh, what can this method assume? And it's usually some uh, rules uh, about the parameters that are being passed. So this parameter will be greater than zero, so you don't have to worry about negative numbers. And the post condition is, so the caller of this method, what can they assume? They can assume that E is, what it passes back is going to be greater, greater than zero. And then it lists the method signature, which is basically the header. So, um, you know, what, uh, what kind of method, what modifiers, what the method returns, what arguments it has, what the method name is. Okay, so that's that. And this is actually E up to a certain number of digits. So that's our goal is to get as close to that is as possible with our program. Okay. So, uh, like I said, the factorial we wrote in a prior video, so I just copied that into here, so you can see that. So let's focus on writing the, um, the uh, code here for E. So it's a running total, so you recall I like to uh, pick a variable for the running total, initialize it. You can see why I initialized it to 1, if you recall the series starts with 1, and then it gets going into the, the heart of it. Uh, and then return result. And now we'll write our for loop. So what we're going to do for, uh, we'll use the variable i. Oops, start with 1. You can see the first one is 1 there, 1 factorial. 
uh, start with one and uh, at x. So we can pass in, you know, 100, then 1,000, then 10,000. See how uh, our estimate gets bigger, the more better, the more, um, the longer the series is. And then we'll increment i by one. Okay, and what we're going to do is a running total. So result equals result plus. So we're basically going to take what we had before, and we're going to add on one divided by the factorial of i, right? So i will be one, two, three, four, dot, dot, dot. Uh, so we're just going to keep adding the result of that new fraction onto result. You can see we're just using the factorial method. Uh, so this is how you use another uh, method without worrying about how it does its work. And that should be it. Let's take a look. So if we run this with, let's say, 10, we come up with not a bad answer. 2.71828, 2.71828. Wow, 82818. So you can see it got it really up to um, up to here or so. Geez, that's a lot of digits. Six digits past the decimal point it got right. With only going, what did I go to? 10. So you can go to a um, thousand, let's say, and uh, get it even more accurate. Uh, uh, 2859, wow, 59045. Geez, a thousand, thousand gives you almost all, of, I think it did give all those digits. Let's just try 10,000 just for fun. Uh, 49045, wow. Okay, so this is a pretty good series. It actually converges quickly. Uh, even even with 10, we got a lot of digits right of, of E. So, but that, um, that's our program for E, so not too, uh, not too complicated. And especially since we're using another method, factorial, it makes, makes it easier. That, that concept's called functional decomposition, where you break a problem into multiple parts, multiple functions. So factorial was one part, and then the series was the other part. And you just essentially do the parts separately and then assemble them uh, at the end. So we did factorial separately and then just used it. Okay, let's write pi. Okay, as a reminder, that's what the series looks like. So, okay, we'll initialize result. What should we initialize it to? We'll start at one, just like that. Uh, result um, double result equals one. Sorry. Result equals one, and then we will return. We're going to do four times result. Okay, so we'll have result be what's in the parentheses, basically, and then we return four times that at the end. Okay, so now let's write our loop. So first of all, we need to start i at three. Okay, so we're going to start at this factor there because we already have the one in result. So we're going to go three, five, seven, nine. So we'll start at three. We will end at x, same concept. Uh, we'll pass in the number, the length of the series. And then uh, we're going to go by twos. So instead of i++, plus plus, what's, what this third uh, thing is actually a statement. So you can, put in, you can put in any assignment statement actually in here. So instead of i++, plus plus, which is a statement by itself, it just, it's just a shorthand. Um, we can put in i equals i plus 2. So every time through the loop, it's going to take what's in i, it's going to add 2 to it, and stuff that back into i. Okay? So that will basically go 3, 5, 7, 9, exactly what we want. Okay, so we are going to do result equals result. Uh, I'm going to do a plus for the moment. Plus 1 divided by i. I'm a little worried about this notion of integer division, which I'll tell you about later. I make sure we don't do integer division. I'm going to make the one a um, uh, have a decimal point. Okay. All right. So that's uh, that's the heart of it, except for the minus plus uh, thing. Okay. So this will just keep adding. It'll go one third, one fifth, one seventh, one ninth. That'll be good. Um, 
the trick now is the sign keeps changing. So one way to do this is we can just say int sign equals um, uh, negative one. And then we could do one plus sign times that. And then switch the sign, which would be sign equals minus sign. Okay, so it'll take, um, when it does this line of code, it'll take sign, it'll do the minus of that, uh, and then stuff that back into sign. So this will keep flipping uh, back and forth between, um, uh, between minus one and, uh, and plus one. So that, uh, that should do the trick. And uh, let's take a look. Compile. Pi. Let's try like 10. OK. And wasn't this, this method is not as quick to come up with an answer. So they came up with three, at least three and something, but not so good. Let's try 100. 3.12. That's getting there. Let's try 1,000. 3.14 if you round. Okay, so this method is actually very fast. So I'm actually going to put in a million. 3.14159, that's good, um, but I can actually, believe it or not, put in a billion, and it works pretty fast. Not instantaneous, as you see, but 3.14159265, okay, um, so that's pretty good up to there. What I'm told, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What I'm told is uh, if you put in five billion, you will get um, 10 digits. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm going to only put in 2 billion. The reason is that integers in uh, Java only go up to a little over 2 billion. So I can't actually type 5 billion into this particular method. I'd have to use a different kind of number, which, um, which I'm neglecting to teach you about right now. So that's, that's actually about the same as we had before in terms of number, uh, number of digits. But uh, that wasn't the point of the lesson. The point of the lesson was to te teach you about looping by two, which we did here to do this series. It was to teach you about uh, multi-line comment. You can see another one here. Uh, basically, like what what uh, what I mean by that is, if you did this, Java assumes that the next line is a good line of of code, so that's a single line comment. But if you do this. Java assumes everything between that and let's say this is a comment. Okay, so that's that's what a multi-line comment essentially essentially means. So, um, so that's that, and this documentation style will cover in a future uh, video. But it's important uh, uh, Im important uh, conventions here. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to the board and do a quick recap. I hope, uh, hope you thought that was kind of fun and interesting, calculating uh, e and pi. So um, looping by two, all you need to do, or looping by anything, looping by five, looping backwards by two, you know, looping by uh, some, some variable that keeps changing. Basically, in the for loop, the three parts, that third part, where you're manipulating basically the loop control variable, you can just say i equals i times two plus two plus one minus one, minus two, you can do whatever you want in that third thing to have that loop control variable uh, go, um, you know, in, in some way besides just I plus plus. Method signature is basically um, a description of what the method is going to do, kind of. Uh, so what it returns, it's that method header, what it returns and what the parameters are and the method name, basically. Uh, and then a multi-line comment, uh, we'll talk more in future videos, but just, just we saw that you usually document your parameters, uh, any preconditions uh, usually on those parameters. So what assumptions can the method author make uh, about uh, the parameters? What the method returns? And then any post conditions. So what can the method uh, caller assume about uh, what the method's going to return? Okay, so, um, and, and then uh, multi-line comments start with a slash star and end with a star slash. And you don't actually need these stars here technically, but it is a popular documentation style. 
and you'll see BlueJ supports it. So if you type in slash star uh, on the line before method, you'll see it creates this whole structure uh, for you. So that's it uh, for today, and I'll talk to you soon.